Ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum. I extend a cordial welcome to all the distinguished participants and the audience present this morning. And we are going to start our program. There is a saying that if you are certain that our faith rests on the sure foundation of reality, we must be content to understand that the failure of others to accept it in no way destroys the truth. Before I introduce the distinguished dignitaries, I would like to enlighten a few points about the organizers of the event, the Madhyama Kendra. In fact, today's is the principal function, which is organized by Madhyama Kendra. Madhyama Kendra is an independent institution founded by concerned citizens with the objective of empowering the community in the sphere of mass media. Established in 1996, the center desires to promote truth and the interest of the society in subtle ways through the existing popular media and also by establishing its own effective means of mass communication. The center has been feeding the regional media in Karnataka with positive materials on various social issues. It frequently organizes both short and long-term training camp to impart practical training to youths of the community and the society in the field of media and mass communication. It also holds programs for the masses to make them aware of their desired participation in the field of media and mass communication. The Madhyama Kendra is currently assisting to launch a fair and objective daily newspaper in Kannada language from Mangalore. The president of the Madhyama Kendra is Mr. H. Muhammad Yasin Malpe, and he is also the chairman of the Community Media Trust Mangalore. And the Madhyama Kendra is directed by Mr. Abdul Salam Puttige, who is a freelance writer and a noted translator. Now I would like to introduce the chairman for today's function. Mr. Saduddin M. Sali is a senior advocate specializing in labor laws and at present practicing in High Court, Bangalore. He is also involved in a lot of social and welfare activities. And Dr. Zakir Naik, who is going to speak on media and Muslims today, he is just 33 years old and he is the president of Islamic Research Foundation, Bombay. Though a medical doctor by professional training, he has devoted himself to analyze Islam and other religions objectively and spread the real truth. He is an international orator on Islam and comparative religion par excellence. In the last three years, in addition to many talks in India, he has delivered more than 160 public speeches abroad, including United States of America, Canada, United Kingdom, South Africa, Malaysia, Singapore, Saudi Arabia, Sri Lanka, Bahrain, Kuwait. He is acclaimed widely for his logical, reasonable and scientific approach towards his subject. He is appreciated for his comparative knowledge of Hinduism, Judaism, Christianity and Islam, especially for the verbatim quotations from the religious scriptures. Media has got a great role in formulating the opinion of the masses and the media should reflect the social activities but it has not significantly helped to project the minorities and the downtrodden. And about all these materials, I would like Dr. Zakir Naik to dwell on this issue. I call upon Dr. Zakir Naik to start his deliberations. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam. Wa ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اقرأ بسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من ألق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالكلم علم الإنسان ما علم يعلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب شوه لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الأقدة من لساني يفكه كولي The chairperson Mr. Salih My respected elders and my brothers and sisters I welcome all of you with Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May peace, blessings and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. The topic of this morning's talk is media and Muslims. Media is defined as the means for mass communication. And media can be classified under two categories. 
electronic media and non-electronic media, which can further be divided into periodical and non-periodical. First, let us analyze what is the non-electronic media. Non-electronic media is a media which consists of literature and written materials, mainly. It's divided into periodical and non-periodical. Non-periodical, non-electronic media is the literature, the written works, which are published, which occur, which appear on non-regular basis. For example, we have pamphlets, we have booklets, books, etc. The periodical non-electronic media is the literature or written works which come at regular intervals. It's published, it appears, it occurs at regular intervals. For example, the annual, biannual or quarterly periodicals and magazines. We have monthly, fortnightly, weekly periodicals and magazine. And we also have the daily or the morning and evening newspapers. The electronic media, again, can be divided into periodical and non-periodical. The non-periodical, which consists of audio, it consists of video, it consists of computers, of internet, etc., which are further divided into various subheadings of periodical and non-periodical. In the audio, we have audio cassettes. We also have compact disc, audio compact disc. In the video, we have films, we have documentary programs, etc. And in the computer, we have diskettes, we have CD-ROMs, which consist of material. And in the periodical electronic media, we have bulletins, news, as well as regular programs, which consist of audio and video both, which comes and is relayed and broadcast on the radio, on the cable TV, on the television, on the satellite, as well as on internet. Today's scientific research has shown us that the retention power of different types of media it keeps on differing. When you read any material, on an average, the retention is 10%. When you hear something, the retention is 20%. When you only see something, that's visual aids, the retention is 30%. And when you hear and see simultaneously, that's on video or when you see a live talk or lecture, the retention is 50%. A research has been done. Therefore, the best and the maximum retention that's there when any person spends time is when he utilizes all three of his senses besides seeing, hearing, and understanding. All three are utilized simultaneously. If you analyze amongst these medias, those which are non-periodical medias, the reach is limited. And the influence on the people is limited as compared to the periodical media. The non-periodical media like booklets, pamphlets, or maybe books, audio cassette, video cassette, they have a limited reach. Because when anyone publishes a book, he publishes in a quantity of maybe 1,000, maybe 2,000, maybe 5,000, maybe 10,000. Sometimes the book is more popular, it may go in larger numbers of 100,000 or maybe more. But normally it's in tens of thousands. It's limited. If you compare the periodical media, like what you hear on the radio, on the television, what you read in the newspapers, etc., this has a wider reach. As we know, the newspapers are published in tens of thousands. Several newspapers in hundreds of thousands, in lakhs, some even in millions. 
and it's on a daily basis. And more shorter the interval, more regular the periodical, better is the impact, better is the influence on the mass. And the periodical media influences the mass on the day-to-day -day activity much better than the non-periodical media. The non-periodical media may talk about ideas and ideologies, but the regular day-to-day -day life is mainly influenced by the periodical media, like newspapers, like television, news, like satellites, etc., on the radio, etc. Therefore, for influencing the mass on a day-to-day -day basis, on a daily basis, on regular intervals, the periodical media has a better impact. Previously, a few years ago or a few decades ago, the media which was maximum used for influencing the people was the newspaper on a day-to-day -day basis. Newspaper, mainly daily newspaper, sometimes even weekly. And now, the times have changed, even the television, even the satellite, which gives daily news, influences the people on the regular day-to-day -day activities. But even today, where the local influence is concerned of that particular country, of that particular area, the newspaper is yet ahead. But where it comes to international influence, international influence, today, the satellite and the television media, they have taken the lead. They are far ahead than the newspaper media. The newspaper mainly influences today on the local level. There are international newspapers in various parts of the world, but the international influence is more by the satellite because satellite has spread throughout the world. And you have news on channels like BBC, CNN, every half an hour, every hour. The topic is media and Muslims. The word Islam comes from the root word salam, which means peace. It also means submitting your will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to Almighty God. In short, Islam means peace acquired by submitting your will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And any person who submits his will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is called as a Muslim. And I started my talk by quoting a verse from the glorious Quran, from Surah Ikra or Surah Alaq, chapter number 96, verse number 1 to 5, he says, Ikra bismi rabbik allazi khalaq. Khalakal insana min alaq. Ikra wa rabbukal akram. Alladhi allama bil kalam. Allama al insana ma alam ya alam. Which means, read, recite, proclaim, in the name of thy Lord who created. Who created you from a congealed clot of blood, something which clings, a leech like substance. Read in the name of thy Lord who is bountiful. Who taught men the use of the pen. Who taught men that which he knew not. The first guidance given to the whole of humanity by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the glorious Quran was not to offer salah, was not to give zakat, it was ikra, it was read. The first guidance in the glorious Quran is ikra, read. But unfortunately, the majority of the Muslims, they say la ikra, we do not do read. And our beloved Prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace be upon him, it's mentioned in the hadith of al Baqi that it is obligatory on every Muslim, man or woman, to acquire knowledge. It's compulsory that every Muslim, irrespective whether he's a male or a female, they should acquire knowledge. Knowledge and education has been given a very high status, a great deal of importance in the Islamic deen. But unfortunately, we find that most of us Muslims, we aren't following the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 110, He says, Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat linnas. O ye Muslims, ye are the best of people evolved for mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us Muslims an honor. You are the khaira ummah, the best of people. Now, whenever there is honor, it is always followed up with a responsibility. There is no honor without responsibility. For example, in a school, the principal has got more honor than a teacher. A teacher has got more honor than a clerk. 
Similarly, a principal has got more responsibility than a teacher. A teacher has got more responsibility than a clerk. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us Muslims, Kuntum khaira ummat nukhrijat lin nas. You are the best of people evolved for mankind. Allah is giving us an honor. Don't you think we have a responsibility? The responsibility is said in the same verse. It continues. Ta'muruna bil ma'roofi wa tanhawna al munkar wa tu'minuna billah. Because we enjoy what is good and we forbid what is wrong and we believe in Allah. You are the best of people evolved for mankind because you enjoy what is good and you forbid what is wrong and you believe in Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us an honor that we are the best of people because we are supposed to enjoy what is good and forbid what is wrong and believe in Allah. If we do not enjoy what is good and if we do not forbid what is wrong, we are not fit to be called as Khaira Ummah. We are fit to be called as Muslims. It is the duty of every Muslim that he should enjoy what is good and forbid what is wrong. That is do Dawah and Islam. It's compulsory. The moment he meets a non-Muslim, it's his duty to present Islam to him. And since today is the age of science and technology, where mass communication has reached very high levels, it's the duty of us Muslims that in order to be Khaira Ummah, we have to be the best in communication. In mass media, we should be number one. Allah calls us Khaira Ummah because we're supposed to enjoy what is good, forbid what is wrong. Today, the world is advancing in science and technology. If we have to be the Khaira Ummah today, we have to be number one in mass communication. But unfortunately, we aren't. We aren't. Unfortunately. It's the duty of every Muslim that he should do dawah. He should deliver the message of Islam, the message of Dinul Haq. It's compulsory. But if we analyze, we are far from doing our duty what Allah has commanded us to do. And if we analyze how much work have we done in this media, we will come to know that we are in a pathetic condition. Let's analyze the non-electronic media. As I mentioned, in the non-electronic media, we have the non-periodicals like booklets, books, and pamphlets. If we know that there are so few organizations which are involved in publishing literature, presenting the correct picture of Islam. Because today, if we see around us, Islam is in the firing line. Literature on the television, on the satellite, we are in the firing line. Very few Islamic organizations are involved in trying to present the picture of Islam to the world. Very few, very few. On the other hand, we have the Christian missionaries. They publish pamphlets. They not only present their picture, they try and even malign Islam to the maximum level. Today, the Western world is afraid only of Islam and nothing else. Only of Islam. And you find there are pamphlets given out. Besides trying to promote their faith, the Christians trying to promote their Christianity, they even have pamphlets which are actually trying to undermine Islam. And when you go to these countries, these missionaries, they go to countries like Pakistan, Muslim countries, they attract the Muslim masses and they distribute beautiful four color leaflets and four color posters, small cards, pocket cards, and some samples we have in a foundation, some of this foundation. And if you read that small pocket card, it will say, Allah Muhammad, peace be upon him. And any Muslim would kiss it and keep it in his pocket. If it's a big poster, he will take it and put it on his wall. Allah Muhammad, peace be upon him. But if you analyze closely, it's not Allah Muhammad, it's Allah Muhabba. God is love. Allah Muhabba, God is love. It's actually a quotation they pick up from the Bible and they write it in the Arabic calligraphy. I don't know, we have posters of duas, etc. So one such beautiful poster, beautiful color, four color job, Rabbana, Rabbana, and then you say, oh Rabbana, then automatically in the front will come, Atina, Fit Dunya, Hasnaton, Filakirat. You know, it's 
It's mechanical. The moment you read, Rabba Nasr, you think, oh, it's a dua. Four color job, beautiful. When I saw it the first time, I thought, oh, the Muslim world is advancing. Alhamdulillah, Muslim world is advancing. Beautiful. And when you ask a person, even who knows Arabic, he may be an ulama, he may be an Arab, born Arab. Even he will read, Allah Muhammad, or he may read, Rabba Na Atina. But if you analyze closely, it is Abba Na, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, in Arabic. In Arabic. Abba Na. You know, they write in such a way that it can easily be mistaken for Abba Na, Atina. And Muslims keep it in the drawing room and they distribute free of charge. And if we happen to sell this also, suppose if you go for Hajj, and Hajj if it sells for 1 1 Riyal, 99% will buy, 99.9% .9 will buy it. It's a snake in the house. It's a snake in the house. Any Arabic thing we see, we think it's a kalam of Allah Ta'ala, we kiss it and give it. We should not cause disrespect to it. They are in the field. We should not use these techniques. These are deceitful techniques. Quran says in Surah Isra chapter 17 verse 81, When truth is heard like in falsehood, falsehood perishes. For falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. We don't have to use the deceitful techniques, but we have to understand that these people, they are using technology, they are using media, not only to propagate their faith, even to undermine Islam, to malign Islam, to catch fish. Do you know, in the span of last 150 years, there were 60,000 books written against Islam and our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 60,000! In the last 150 years, 60,000 books were written against Islam and our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We, I doubt if Muslims have written so many books in English language to promote Islam, I doubt. It's a shame on us. We are far behind. And do you know that the Bible, which is supposed to be the holy scripture of the Christian, of the Western world, do you know that according to last year's statistics, they have translated the Bible into 2,032 different languages. 2,032 different languages. That was the status more than one to one and a half year back. Now I don't know what's the latest. 2,032 different languages. Do you know how many languages the Holy Quran has been translated in? Do you know? Can anyone guess? Can anyone guess? How many languages? How many? Can anyone guess? No one can guess also. It's a shame. We don't even know. Leave aside, we have to answer. We don't even know. Muslims don't even know how many languages our glorious Quran. The Kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been translated in. Hardly 100 languages, maybe little more than 100 languages. Only. And the Christian missionaries, they say that even after translating the Bible into 2,032 different languages, yet they only reach 80% of the world. Only 80%. Now imagine with 100 languages, how many percentage of the world are we reaching? 100 means hardly 5% of 2,000. It's a shame on us. Little bit more than 100. That's also recently. A few decades earlier, it was negligible. It's recently in the past few years that we have translated various languages. And the Christian missionary, do you know, only in Arabic, they have translated the Bible in 11 different dialects. Different for the Egyptian, different for the Saudi. 11 different dialects in Arabic alone, catching fish. 11 different dialects. In Arabic alone. I mean, different, different. Because Arabic is one, but different, different styles is there. We have not even translated the Quran. Very few, recently. The English translation also came just recently. The first English translation was done by a non-Muslim. Maligning Islam in Latin. Then by George Sale. Translated from there. And then we Muslims woke up, oh, they are maligning Islam, and then we make an effort. It's a shame on us. If you analyze the periodical, non-electronic media, talking about annual periodicals, biannually, quarterly, or monthly, how many international Islamic magazines do we have? How many? 
How many? Yeah, if you know of Muslim World League, Impact International, Juma, I doubt whether any of you may have heard. Few may have heard about this. Majority may not have heard. It's unknown. Only those who are in the field. But there are very few. Very few. But even these magazines that are there, it mainly goes to the Muslims. If you analyze the Christian missionary plain truth, have you heard about plain truth? Who hasn't heard about plain truth? Raise up your hand. Who hasn't heard of the magazine plain truth? Plain truth, plain truth. One, two, three, four, five, maybe ten. Five I could have got ten. Only ten people did not hear about plain truth. That means more than 90% of the audience know about plain truth. Plain truth. How many heard about the Juma magazine? It's Islamic magazine. One, two. How many people heard about the Impact International? Supposed to be very good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yet, it's a shame. See, the international magazines of Muslim Ummah are supposed to be the best. Horizon, Muslim World League, maximum circulation. Less than 5% of the Muslims know. And the non Muslim plain truth, which is distributed free of charge in millions of copies, less than 5% don't know. This is the situation. It's a shame on us. You know, plain truth, they give free, free, millions of copies. It's a missionary magazine. And the more articles that they take out with expertise, they have the best of writers there. The best quality of paper you find. Four color job. And besides this, plain truth goes to more non Christian than Christians. The Muslim magazine go more to Muslims than very few non Muslims. Majority complementary, that also. And if you analyze, even in the local magazines, we have several local magazines, and even in India, the best that I know of, which has the maximum circulation, is Islamic Voice. There are also hardly 15,000. And the person, Sadatullah Khan Saab, Brother Sadatullah Khan, is a close friend of mine. He's from Bangalore. He's doing a wonderful job. Wonderful job. May Allah give him jazai khair. But yet, Compared to the Western world, no way. It's one of the best monthly newspaper or magazine you want to call it. It has the maximum circulation. The others which are running for 10 years, 20 years, 5,000, 6,000, some 2,000, some 1,000. Shame on us. 20 years we're operating. Nothing. No results. And majority of these papers also go to Muslims, Muslims, Muslims. At least Islamic wise, I'm told that more than 3,000 go to non-Muslims, alhamdulillah. But even in these Islamic magazines that we have, it only gives a picture of Islam, which is important. But if you see the magazines run by Christian missionaries, they, beside promoting Christianity, they do in a subtle way, they even give you day-to-day -day knowledge. So even if you're not interested in Christianity, you will take the magazine to know what's happening in the world. And then indirectly, you are being inoculated with their message. You know Time Magazine? Who doesn't know Time Magazine out here? See, everyone knows. Newsweek, who doesn't know? Everyone knows. 100%. 100%. Time Magazine is a weekly magazine. Supposed to be neutral. Supposed to be. Supposed to be neutral. And supposed to be unbiased. But you can see the material that's there. It's bombarding the Muslims. Attacking Islam. And when Sheikh Dizad, you may have heard of Sheikh Ahmad Dizad, Alhamdulillah. He's not well at present. May Allah give him shifa. He wanted to give an ad. Future world constitution. Future world constitution. It was an advertisement of the glorious Quran. Sheikh Didar wanted to pay. Whatever the normal charges is, he wanted to pay for a full page in the Time magazine. And the Time magazine refused the advertisement. Imagine. They refused a paid advertisement from IPCI, Islamic Propagation Center International, because it was promoting Quran. Can you believe? supposed to be neutral, supposed to be unbiased. The Time magazine refused, saying we are allowed to refuse any advertisement without giving any reason. That's one of the clauses. Indirectly, the clause is that they want to refuse things which go against them or which favor the Muslims. It's not mentioned in black and white, but that's in hidden words. Imagine. Indirectly, they are inoculating the people, the masses, with their philosophy, and with anti-propaganda against Islam. How many, how many daily newspapers do we have? How many Islamic daily newspapers? We don't have a single international daily Islamic newspaper. It's a shame on us. 
like how New York Times, you'll get any part of the world. All the major cities of the world, you'll get New York Times. You'll get in Bombay, you'll get in Delhi, you'll get in Madras, New York Times. We Muslims have local papers, maybe in Bombay you have a few Urdu papers, maybe in Kerala you have a few Malayalam papers, you know, local papers. The circulation is limited, limited. In Bombay, maybe 10,000, 20,000, maximum 30 to 40,000 or 50,000, limited. Compared to Times of India, 4 lakhs, 400,000. And even these newspapers, Urdu newspapers in Bombay, 99% or 98% are being read by Muslims only not by non-Muslims. So how can you spread Islam? How can you convey a message to the non-Muslims? Media is a very important tool for conveying the message of Islam. What we should do, that we should have top-class journalists. Unfortunately, the Muslim Ummah, the Muslim world, have very few people who are good with the pen. Not that we can't make, but we don't want to make an effort. And there are some Muslims who are good with the pen, but they are, I would call, secular in inverted commas. Secular inverted commas. They write for all non-Islamic papers and all. There are a few good with the pen. What we require is a daily newspaper or a monthly magazine, which can penetrate into the masses. Alhamdulillah, a few Muslims, a few rich businessmen, they didn't make an effort in taking out such magazine on a monthly or a fortnightly basis, but it didn't click off as well as they had planned. What we require is the best people, and we should be able to capture all the three levels. Firstly, only by having good journalists, it's not sufficient. Because if you have good Muslim journalists, the editor sitting on top of him will not let that article be published in the magazine. So what's the use? Even if you have good editors, the boss of that newspaper will not allow you to publish that article in his newspaper or his magazine. So we Muslims should have a three-tier. It should be owned by Muslims, the editors should be top-class Muslims or good with the pen, as well as the journalists, all three levels. If any is missing, there are chances there may be certain lacuna. Top-class Muslim journalists, top-class editors, and good philanthropists and good people who own this press. And even the strategy of marketing should be A1. Then only can we penetrate into the media. I know, alhamdulillah, there are a few organizations which are trying their level best, and I'm told that Mahdi Imam, alhamdulillah, they are trying to have courses on journalism, and there are people having in other parts. But what we require, the people training should be of international caliber. If you can't find Muslims, hire the non-Muslim to train them, no problem. No problem. If you can't find Muslims who can train, get the best non-Muslim actually to train in English writing, not about Islam, English writing. And once they are trained how to write in English, because English is an international language, or whatever language you want to make out the paper, and if you want to bring in a local language, teach them about local language. And then a person who is well-versed in the field of Islam can infiltrate the journalist with the ideas of Islam. If you don't have a Muslim who has good knowledge of Islam, who is good with the pen, get a non-Muslim. should see to it that the trainers should be of top international repute. And we should see to it that when we pay these people in our papers, oh, working for Islamic paper, okay, how much salary are you getting in times of dinner? 10,000. Okay, work for me for 5,000. How will you come? A person who's drawing 10,000, 20,000 in a non-Islamic newspaper, you ask him to work for half the salary or quarter the salary in your newspaper. How will he come forward? The Muslims should pay the Muslims more than the market. That's what we do in our foundation. In our foundation, Alhamdulillah, all the people that are employed are getting more salary than what they can get outside in the market. So that tomorrow they won't say, oh, we are working for Islam, therefore we are getting half the salary. See, there are few people who Allah has given them enough wealth. If they work voluntary, they work at half the pay, no problem. But the masses, we should see to it that we give them what is their requirement. Then only can we extract them. Then we see to it that we take out double work from them. Pay them well and take out good work from them. That's what we require. Unfortunately, in the Muslim organization that we have, even the Dawa organization, how many full-time do we have? How many? And you pay them a salary of 1,000 rupees. To the Imam, how much you pay? 1,500 rupees, 2,000 rupees. What's going to happen with that? Give them good substantial so that they can dedicate their full life for the cause of Islam. 
now analyzing the electronic media. In the electronic media again, you have the audio cassette, you have the video, you have the computer, you have the satellite, etc. In audio cassettes, again, as I said, if it's non-periodical, reach is limited. How many audio cassettes can you make? How many video copies can you make, etc.? But still, it has a certain advantage. Like when traveling in a car, you can play audio cassette, a talk on Islam, or a promoting Islam. And Alhamdulillah, the Islamic Research Foundation, that's based in Bombay, we have, Alhamdulillah, one of the largest collection of Islamic video cassettes in the world. More than three and a half thousand different titles we have. Three and a half thousand titles. I travel various parts of the world. I have not come across any organization which have anywhere close to one and a half thousand. Alhamdulillah, we have collected from various parts of the world more than three and a half thousand video cassettes, out of which more than three thousand are in English, more than five hundred are in Urdu, a couple of hundred are in Arabic, and a few in French, German, Spanish, etc. These cassettes we give on a free hire basis in Bombay against a refundable deposit of 200 rupees. The person can take the video cassette home, watch it free of charge for one week, he can keep it with him. Within one week, he should earn it back. He can take his deposit back or take another cassette. Absolutely free. We even distribute literature, more than 50 different literature on Islam and compiled religion, absolutely free throughout India. And Alhamdulillah, the next media, as I told you, is the cable TV. We have been successful, and I can say, alhamdulillah, that Bombay is the only non-Muslim city in the world, which I know of. Bombay is the only non-Muslim city in the world, which I know of, where, alhamdulillah, every day, we show dawa programs for three hours on the cable TV network to more than a million homes. More than a million homes. Ten lakh houses, every day for three hours. Three hours, hardcore dawa. You know, why do I say hardcore dawa? Hardcore dawa means actually giving the message. You know, you see me talking on all these topics, direct message, without compromise. Not about salah and about kirat, that's important. You have on Muslim country channels showing salah and kirat, that's good. But that's not hardcore dawa. Alhamdulillah, every day, for three hours, we show our programs on the cable TV network to more than a million homes. And do you know, those people that show these programs, more than 80% are non-Muslims. The people watching this program, more than 80% are non-Muslims. And when we started, initially, we had to pay. Oh, please show our program. They said, okay, we paid and they showed the program. Then it became popular. It became free. Now do you know, these non-Muslims are willing to pay us to show our programs on their channel. Non-Muslims giving us money. Yo, brother Zaki, take money, we want your programs. Why? Quality. Quality is important. Alhamdulillah, what we say, don't give us money, increase the time. From two hours we said, show it for three hours and they agreed. Actually, more time we give them, the more money they should pay us. We told them, don't show two hours, show three hours, we want to give it complimentary, free. Alhamdulillah. Allah has his ways, he gets his job done in his ways. If Muslim cannot do it, Allah gets it done from non-Muslims. Allah says in Surah Muhammad, chapter 47, verse number 38, If you turn away from the path, do not do your job. If you do not do the job, Allah will supplement your place another people. And they will not be like you. The Jews were the chosen people. Allah asked them to follow the commandment. They didn't follow the commandment. Allah took them out and praised the Arabs. He made them sit on the head. Allah says, if you do not do the job, Allah will substitute in a place another people. Summa laikunam salakum, and they will not be like you. So if you do not do the job, Allah will take you out and bring other people. You know, today the fastest growing religion in the world is Islam. In America, in England. We Indians, supposed to be born in Muslim families, can't do the job. Allah gets people born in non-Muslim families, make them Muslim and make them sit on your head. They are doing our job, Alhamdulillah. The organization in states and Europe, they are far better than us. We are nothing compared to them. A shame on us. We haven't reached the media yet. In the film industry, Muslim are on the top. Number one. Actors, number one Muslim. Film producers, number one Muslim. 
music director number one Muslim, actress number one Muslim. Are we using this technology for spreading Islam? It's a shame on us. Allah has given us the technique. It's a shame on us. You go to the Bombay film industry, number one are Muslims. If Muslims withdraw, the film industry will go down. How many film industry people are using the equipment and the technology to promote Islam? How many? It's a shame on us. Alhamdulillah, since the past couple of years, we have even been successful in penetrating the satellite channels. See, today if you analyze on the television, you have news media against Islam, against Islam. On the satellite, against Islam. You have channels which are giving news which are biased. And all the material you see, majority of the things on the satellite are un-Islamic, majority. We, Alhamdulillah, have been successful in showing our programs on various international channels. And Alhamdulillah, we have been able to show our program even on the ATN, Asian Television Network. You all might have heard of that. Asian Television Network. It's the channel which mainly shows film songs, Hindi film songs mainly. It's a very popular channel. Now it has been discontinued for a couple of months because they want to revamp the whole thing and come in a bigger way. So therefore, discontinued. We Alhamdulillah show our program on the ATN, Asian Television Network, thrice a week, on Monday, Wednesday and Friday, for half an hour, from 6 to 6.30. And this ATN reaches 68 countries in the world. 68 countries in the world. Imagine, Alhamdulillah. It's a desire that we should try and do maximum dawa what we can. At least we're able to stop the wrong activity for half an hour. The wrong things that are going on. Instead of that, we are promoting Islam. Therefore, you see the cameras that are there. They are basically cameras which can shoot on the satellite. These are special cameras that only if you record on these better cam cameras, can you have it broadcast on the air. I'm asking you, how many Muslim Dawah organizations have beta cam cameras? How many? Do you know of any? It's a shame on us. Muslim businessmen, oh, they own studios. Costing billions of rupees. Own studios and own the best of equipment. But how many Muslim Dawah organization do you have who have a beta cam set up? You can count them on your fingertips throughout the world. But only when you shoot on these high equipment can you have it broadcast on the satellite. If you shoot on normal VHS, it cannot go on the satellite. Maximum it can go on the video cassette in your home. That also quality is bad. And normally we have the Islamic, you know, lectures being shot. Oh, the camera is going on the ceiling, camera is coming down, out of focus, it's getting bad. Who would like to watch a video cassette which is not shot properly? But when you see the film, movies, oh, multi-camera job, you can see all scenery and everything, and a person enjoys. The Islamic lectures, out of focus, half-time ceiling is being seen, and you cannot see who the person is, it's not clear. When we present Islam, we should present it in the best way, par excellence. Therefore, Muslims should do things that they should be the best in that work. We see in the media that always they are presenting Islam in the wrong way. They're presenting Islam as terrorist. See, we have full-time channels such as BBC, CNN, you know, presenting their view, presenting view of the Western world. They're international channels. They're international channels. They're presenting their view. And they're supposed to be neutral but they give a wrong picture many a times and they project they show some shots of wars taking place in Afghanistan or somewhere here or in Palestine and present Islam in the bad light few times they do say oh their poor people are getting harassed and this and that but if you see on a whole on a whole they are trying to create a neutral image but actually they are undermining Islam in Bosnia you see where we are being butchered, tortured, we are being harassed. They, they show it on the news, they have to show, otherwise they won't be called as neutral. But where little thing happens, any bomb blast takes place first, main suspect caught three Muslims in New York bomb blast. All Muslims, and the photograph will be, will be flashing on the news every half an hour, without proof. Then, after two months, they caught a wrong person, very small, you know, once they will show it. 
or they got a wrong person. But before damage is already done, the damage is done in the Muslim Ummah, showing continuously for weeks together that Muslims have done this bomb blast, etc. Then when they know it was wrong, when the world comes to know it is wrong, they give a small issue, oh, it was a wrong person they caught. On the newspapers you find, ah, 50-year-old Arab married a 16-year-old girl. Headlines. Front page in Times of India, it will come at the bottom. On the third page. 50-year-old Arab marrying a 16-year-old girl. You have 50-year-old men in America raping 10-year-old girl, it doesn't come in the papers. Raping, it doesn't come. 50-year-old man raping, not once, several times, you see the statistics. Raping girls which have not reached maturity, it doesn't come in the paper, why? It's not news for them. Every day in America, 1,900 cases of rape take place. It is so common, it's not worth mentioning, you know. Every day, 1,900 cases of rape. Means every 1.3 minutes, one case of rape is taking place. I'm here since about 40 minutes. You know how many rapes may have taken place? At least 30 in America by the time I'm giving this talk. 30 rapes may have taken place. It doesn't come in the paper. The media is in their hand. They can project the way they want. We have to control the media. We are the Khaira Ummah. It's our job to deliver the message of truth to the whole humanity. We aren't doing it. Wallah, we aren't doing it. It's a shame on us. We require that we should have full-time Islamic satellite channels. We don't have a single. We have channels owned by Muslim countries, various, but they are not Islamic Dawa channels. On those Muslim countries, you may see Dhamas, you may see Western movies, all sorts of things you see. What we want, Islamic Dawa channels. The Christians have it, the Jains have it, the Hindus have it. Even the Qadianis have it. Do you know that Qadianis? MTV, Muslim TV, run by Qadianis, beam from London. Handful of the people, handful there. It's a shame on us. What are we doing? There are talks in the Muslim world, oh, inshallah, within one year the channel is going to be launched. I'm hearing since, since IRF was started, since seven years I'm hearing, the channel is going to come, the channel is going to come. Every time I travel, channel is going to come. We have the petrodollars with us, but we don't have a single Islamic full-time Dawa channel. It's a shame on us. It doesn't cost a lot of money. See, the Muslims are so rich that there are thousands of individual Muslims who can own 10 channels at a time. Easy. Only from the pocket money. It's not expensive for them. It's the pocket money. Chiller, chiller, change. They can have channels just by the change money. It's a shame on us. What are we doing? Allah has given us all the niyamat, the black gold. But what are we doing? Are we making an effort? So what we decided, we are very small. Our organization, IRF, is very small. Okay, till the time, if even our desire to start, Allah hasn't given us that funds. So we said at least we start in a small way and we started. And now our programs are being shown in America, in Bahrain, in Kuwait, in Gulf countries, in Malaysia, Alhamdulillah, on irregular basis. On regular basis, on the ATN, on the NEPC, on certain channels, Alhamdulillah. And inshallah, we are having talks with the ART. Inshallah, very soon it will be shown throughout the world on the ART, Arab radio television. And inshallah, Allah will see to it that even an Islamic Dawah channel will start, inshallah. Allah knows best who will he get the work done through. We have the computer media. We have computer, we have diskettes, we have CD-ROMs. Now internet has come, email has come. We have on the disk on the computer today. It's so easy. Alhamdulillah, the Islam Foundation has more than 200 different packages on the computer only on Islam. 200. We have the Quran, we have the Hadith, we have the Sharia, we have the Fiqh. You want to know that how many times is the name of Jesus Christ, peace be upon mentioned in the Quran? Press the button, you get the answer. 25 times. How many times is by the name Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned by name? Four times. Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse 43. Surah Azab, chapter 33, verse 40. Surah Fatah, chapter 48, verse 29. Surah Muhammad, chapter 47, verse number 2. Fingertips. And as Ahmad once. Surah Saf, chapter 61, verse number 6. Fingertips. You want to know what does the Quran speak about? Nisa, woman? Press the button, you get the answer. You press another button, the printout comes out. You want to know what does the Hadith say about Salah? Press the button, you get the answer. Which is the Sahih Hadith? Which is the Sahih Hadith? Everything on your fingertips. The world is advancing. How many people utilize compact disc for research of Islam, for studying Islam? How many people? 
Can anyone raise their hand who uses compact disc? CD-ROM, you know? CD-ROM, one, Alhamdulillah. See, leave aside creating, we don't have people using it. If you don't use it, how will we have the market? See, everything. We have the Qur'an of the Qur'an on audio CD, on CD-ROM. We have the translations in several languages. We have fiqh, sharia, hadith, everything on it. We have Islamic games for children. How do you attract children? You have to make a child Islamic from day one. Don't wait till he grows an adult and then talk about Islam. Right from the beginning, we in IRF have a children's wing, mainly catering from the age of three to nine. Right from young, you train them. Train them to be journalists, good in writing, right from the beginning. Don't wait till they become graduate and then train them. That you can do to those people who don't have the opportunity. That also you have to do. But catch them young. We have games on the computer, how to influence children to come closer to Islam. They can entertain and yet they learn. And I've given a talk on Islam for children. You can observe that cassette. And I've shown the technique how to attract the children right from childhood. Now world is advancing. Previously we had the telephone, then we had the fax. Now we have the email. Email. Call the electronic mail. Very cheap. Normally when I send a fax to America, every page I have to spend about 100 to 150 rupees, depending on the matter. In email, I send several pages only for one rupee. One rupee. But unfortunately, the Muslim organization don't have email. Now they have started. We are so backward. When the full world advances, then we Muslim want to adopt that. In email, you can communicate cheap, very fast, electronic mail. You type on your computer, press a button, it reaches there. Simple. He opens his box. Box, he doesn't have to go to a post box. It just he presses a button, it comes on his screen. Easy. Directly from your doorstep to his doorstep. In fact, it takes time. Every page goes through here. Yeah? Just press a button, reach it directly. How many people are utilizing this? Do you know today on the internet? Internet is advancing. The majority material on the internet on Islam is against Islam. Do you know that? On the internet, if you read about Islam, Mainly, they are non muslim written against Islam. They're mentioning Quran is not the word of God. There are so many grammatical errors in the Quran. There are so many unscientific points in the Quran, which no Muslim is replying. It's a shame on us. No Muslim is replying. Very few, few organizations. Very few organizations. There are chatting channels on the internet. There are channels. How you have satellite channels? It's somewhat different, but even they are called chatting channels. On the internet, you have chatting channels. Many of them are run by Christian missionary, known as Jesus Cafe, etc. When you enter this channel, you can have a question answer session with them. We in IRF, Alhamdulillah, we sit in Bombay and do dawa on an individual basis with people in America, people in UK, people in Singapore, throughout the world, Alhamdulillah, at a fingertips. We type, the question comes on his screen. He gives the answer, it comes on our screen. Are you aware that you can do dawah sitting in your home, sitting in your office, on one-to-one -one basis? You know, if I have to speak on telephone for two hours, you know how much I have to spend? If I have to speak to America, two hours, how much will it cost me? How much? Tens of thousands of rupees. On email, that's 10, 20 rupees. 30, 40 rupees. And not with one person, simultaneously I'm speaking with 20 people. It's like conferencing. I'm having a conference telephone with a person in America, one sitting in London, one sitting in Singapore, one in Malaysia, conferencing. All five are chatting with each other doing dawa. If I have a conference line, how much will it cost me? The world is advancing. How many people know how to use the internet? But doing dawa, presenting Islam on these chatting channels is a different technique. It's altogether different. See, having knowledge of Islam is a must for any type of dawa whether oral, whether writing, whether video, knowledge. But the technique keeps on changing. The technique keeps on changing. And we at IRF, Alhamdulillah, we train the people how to talk. And we have a unique style of doing dawah that whenever we meet a non-Muslim or non-Muslim comes to us, instead of talking a thousand good points about Islam, even after we convince a thousand good points about Islam, that non-Muslim will say, ah, you're the man who marries more than one woman, ah. Ah, you're the man who keeps the woman in the veil. Oh, you're the people who don't have alcohol, don't have pork. Ah, you're the people who have non-vegruthless people. 
You speak a thousand good points, but the few negative points in his mind will never make him accept Islam. Never. So what we do, instead of talking a thousand good points about Islam, what we say is, what do you think is wrong with Islam? With your limited knowledge, whether right or wrong, whatever knowledge you have about Islam from media, from newspaper, from television, from magazines, what do you feel is wrong with Islam? And we tell him, brother, you're most welcome to criticize Islam. No problem. We can take it. We can take it. You want to criticize the Quran? No problem. Just give us the reason why do you criticize it. So they come up with their questions. And we have done a survey and we have come to know there are hardly 20 questions which the non-Muslims have against Islam, which a common non-Muslim has. The common non-Muslim is 80% non-Muslim. If they ask you a question on Islam, they will ask you five or six questions. All these five or six questions asked by common 80% of the non-Muslim will fall within these 20 questions. We have done a survey. Common 20 questions. Like, as I told you, why is the Muslim man allowed to have more than one wife? Why do you keep the woman in the veil? Why do women inherit half the share of the men? Why do you all have non-veg? Why don't you all have pork? Why don't you have alcohol? What is the meaning of jihad? Why do you all worship the Kaaba? Why aren't non-Muslims allowed in the holy city of Makkah? These are the common questions they ask. So what we do, we want each and every Muslim in the world should be able to answer these questions pit pat with references. And these common 20 questions will remain the same, irrespective of whether you are in India, whether in America, whether in Europe, throughout the world, these 20 common questions are the same. There may be additional two or three questions based on the locality. Like when I had gone to state, the additional question was that can we buy a house mortgage loan from a bank allowed haram or halal can we have chicken from mcdonald's can we have kentucky fried chicken additional two questions but the remaining 20 questions are the same see these 20 questions have emerged how because the media is bombarding by the help of the media they're bombarding the people with this information against women women in islam don't get their rights Quran conflicts with science. So these 20 questions have emerged. These 20 questions may change after five years, after two years. But today, these 20 questions are prevalent. So if every Muslim knows the answer of these 20 questions, you can neutralize 80% of the non-Muslims, 80%. These 20 questions may change after a few years. But now, you should be prepared. And when you give the answer, we give the answer on various levels. We should train them, we should be professionals. How many professional dyes do we have? How many? How many full-time dyes do we have in the Muslim world? Supposed to be a religion of missionaries. Do you know the Christians have 60,000 crusaders raising dust throughout the world? 60,000 paid people, paid full-time workers. Not clerks and all, actual dawah giving talks throughout the world. 60,000. How many international dyes do we have? You can count them on your fingertips. How many? It's a shame on us. We are supposed to be a religion of missionaries. It's a shame on us. And when we give the replies, we go on various levels. First quote from the scripture, if it's then the Quran or the Hadith, give the quotation. If it's then the religious scripture of the Hindu, the Bible, quote that. Then go to the level. Second level is of logic. Third is of science. Give the answers on different levels, quoting scriptures, our scripture and their scriptures, then quote the answer with reason and then with scientific data and statistics. For example, someone asks us, why not to have pork? If you ask this question to any IRS speaker, Islamic Research Foundation speaker, the tape recorder will go on. It's mentioned in the Quran in no less than four different places. Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 173, Surah Maida chapter 5 verse number 3, Surah Anam chapter 6 verse 145, Surah Nahal chapter 16 verse 115. Then go to Arabic. Hurrimat alaykum ul maitu tu waddamu walahmul khanzeed. Wa ma ahulla li gair al labi. Forbidden for you for food. Ah, dead meat, blood, the flesh of swine, and any food on which any name besides Allah has been invoked. Go from the Bible. The Bible says in Leviticus chapter number 11, verse number 7 and 8. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 14, verse number 8. In the book of Isaiah chapter 65, verse number 2 to 5. The Christian is shocked. It has an impact. This is called a way of communicating. When you quote from the scripture, he is shocked. Then come to the reason of science. Give a scientific answer. There are no less than 17 different diseases which a person can have when he has pork, the flesh of swine. TT. It causes more fat building than muscle building material. 
Then go to logical answer. It's the filthiest animal in the world. It's the most shameless animal in the world. You should give the answer in certain levels. You may never know. One person will be impressed because the scripture says that is sufficient. The other person will say, I don't care if the Quran and the Bible says. Prove to me scientifically. Then you prove scientifically. So when you give an answer, it should be able to satisfy majority of the people. Your answer should not satisfy only a few group of people. The answer should be such, it should satisfy Muslims and non-Muslims alike. It's a technique. How many people are trained? We are full-time doctors. We are full-time engineers. We have full-time advocates. How many full-time dais do we have? The Quran says, as I quoted in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 110, it's compulsory for everyone to dawa. At least part-time die. But the Quran says in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 104, let there arise out of you a group of people who enjoy what is good and forbid what is wrong. These are the ones to attain felicity. Quran is speaking about full-time dies. There should be a group of full-time dies. It's the duty of the Ummah to support them. When the Christian missionary says that pray, you know what he means? He means money. He means money. Jimmy Swaggart, who had a debate with Sheikh Ahmed Didad, every day he used to receive a donation of $1 million to keep his head above water. $1 million. He used to be seen on more than 150 countries on the satellite. That's in 80s, you know 80s. 150 countries used to be seen. $1 million a day. When he says pray, people give him money. We Muslims, we do dua. We Muslims, Alhamdulillah. We do dua. Ah, ma aapke liye dua kare. Yo, we will do prayers for you. See, prayer is required. Allah's help is maximum that we require. We require duas. But the Muslims are a bit selfish, majority of us. It's free, free of charge. When we ask actually to give something which will go away from material loss, they will not come forward. It's a shame on us. We are supposed to be the community which gives the maximum charity. What we require, we require training. It's an art how to communicate. Whether in writing, whether in speech, whether in public, whether on the internet, it's an art. It's a different technique. We train in IRF how to do with a person if you're traveling in a bus. No, you will be with him only for about 20 minutes. Then you'll get out. You may never meet with him ever in your life. He's a part non-Muslim. How to do with a person who you're going to spend 20 minutes is an art. You can't give a lecture, okay, now I want to talk on concept of God, image, and religion. He'll listen to you. It's a technique. How you do dawa with your colleague who you meet in your office every day. How to do dawa with your classmate you meet in school or university every day. It's a different technique. You may be with him for a few years. How to do dawa with your neighbor who you may spend 20 years with. It's a different technique. How to initiate. You can't say, okay, brother John, I want to talk to you about Islam. Please give me 20 minutes. He won't give you. You have to instigate him to ask you questions. It's a technique. How do you instigate him to ask you questions? The technique. You can refer to my cassette on techniques of dawah. But I've given talks how to instigate the person. He will tell you, please, brother, give me half an hour. I want to know about Islam. That same man. It's a technique. Like how the people are giving us money to show our programs. Technique. How to speak on stage is a technique. What should your distance be from the mic? How do you move your hands? How do you modulate your sound is a technique. It's an art. The Christian missionaries, they are trained in Harvard University. Do you know that? They are MBAs. How many MBAs do we have in the field of Dawah? How many? How many? How many do we have? Very few. Hardly if you search, you may be able to find. Alhamdulillah, we have in our foundation MBAs. Brother Nausha Nurani is an MBA. We have people who are medical doctors who are full-time dies besides myself. We have people who are trained. We want the cream of society. In the Muslim Ummah, what we have, that you put him in school. If he fails, you put him in Dawal Ulum. When he's unsuccessful, you want to put him in Dawal Ulum. We require the cream of the society to preach Islam, not the rejects. Alhamdulillah, yet we have great ulamas. It's because of Allah's help, it's not because of us. We require the best. You teach him about medicine, if he can pass MBBA, that means he has a certain level of intelligence. Let your one son or one daughter go into the field of Dawa. But no, oh, I spent lakhs of rupees for him to become doctor. How can I sacrifice my son who's going to earn for me lakhs of rupees? How can I? Oh, I've made him an engineer. I've flogged out the parents will say, how can he go for dawah now? If he fails in lower classes, you say, oh, I've sacrificed my son for Islam. Hypocrites. 
hypocrites. What are we? We require the best, we require the cream of the ummah, not the rejects. In spite of that, Alhamdulillah, we have great scholars coming out from the Ulum. They are doing hard work. They are doing good work, Alhamdulillah. But it's a shame on us. We require trained people. Islam always speaks about excellence, about the best. We are the Khaira Ummah, the best of people. Whatever we do, we should be the best. I tell the people that you may do a very small job. You may be a jhaduwala sweeper, but be the best. Try and excel in that field. If you are a mochi or cobbler, be the best cobbler. As long as the job is lawful, it's halal, see that you excel in that job. We require the best of the people. And now media and communication is expanding. The whole world has become a globe. It's very easy to communicate. And if we Muslims, if we do not propagate the deen, I pity our state. See, it's nothing happened to Islam. I'm not bothered about Islam. You know why? Allah gives a promise in the glorious Quran. Three places. In Surah Tawbah chapter 9 verse 33 and Surah Saf chapter 61 verse 9, Allah says, that Allah has sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth so that it will prevail over all the other ways of life, over all the other isms, whether it be communism, secularism, atheism, Islam is destined to supersede all, overcome them all, master them all. However much the pagans don't like it, however much the mushrik don't like it. And Allah repeats the message in Surah Fatah, chapter 48, verse 28. Allah has sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth so that it will prevail over all the other ways of life, over all the other isms, whether it be atheism, communism, secularism, any religion. Islam is destined to supersede all, overcome them all, master them all, and enough is Allah as a witness. With or without you, with or without me, the rubbish that you and I are. What are we? Nothing. The rubbish that you and I are. With or without you, with or without me, Allah has promised that his deen of Islam, deen al haq will prevail over the full world. Allah doesn't require you and me. Allah has his ways. Allah is giving us an opportunity to do a prophet's job and to earn a prophet's reward. It's a shame on us. Allah doesn't require you and me. Allah is giving us an opportunity. Make hay while the sun is shining. If you put your efforts this way, you'll go to Jannah. Allah doesn't require you and me to spread his religion. He's giving us an opportunity to make hay while the sun is shining. The Quran says in Surah Al-Hal, chapter 16, verse number 125, Invite all to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them and reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. I would like to end my talk by giving the quotation of the glorious Quran from Surah Fusilat, chapter 41, verse 33, which says, Woman ahasun kaala mimman ilallahi wa amil salihaun wa kaala inna ni minal muslimin. Who is better in speech than one who invites to the way of thy Lord, works righteousness, and then says, I'm the first to bow to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa akhru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.